Behind every manicure is a story. Every day, nail technicians are exposed to a range of chemicals that are known to cause cancer, birth defects, skin problems, and respiratory issues like asthma. Chemicals like toluene, formaldehyde, phthalates, and acrylates are routinely found in cosmetics. What do nail technicians know about the chemicals they work with and how to protect themselves? For most nail technicians in Toronto, English isn't their first language. They've come here as immigrants, and finding work is key to their future success. They may not be familiar with their rights as a worker. How does language and immigration status affect nail technicians' health? Nail salons are not uniform workplaces. There is no single way a person learns to do nails. The lines between owners, workers, families, and friends are often blurry at a salon. How does employment and education affect the way nail technicians protect themselves at work? Behind every manicure, there is a journey. There are hopes and fears, questions and answers. There is a story. It's time to hear it. Central Toronto Community Health Centres, with funding from the Women's College Hospital Women's Exchange, are researching the answers to these questions. With the support of York University, the Chinese Interagency Network Labour Committee, and the Canadian Partnership for Children's Healthy Environments, the Healthy Nail Technicians Project aims to engage with women working at nail salons and identify their challenges and needs. During this project, peer workers from nail salons and from the Chinese community will outreach to nail technicians. We will then hold a focus group to explore the questions of health, employment and education with past and present workers. Resources and workshops will be tailored to address the needs and concerns that were raised during outreach and the focus group. At the end of the project, we will hold a multi-stakeholder roundtable with nail technicians and other key players involved with this issue to share what we've learned and identify areas of possible collaboration. Behind every manicure is a story. Are you ready to listen? And can I ask, uh, do we have any questions for them that we, we would like to ask about that project? Yes? How do you outreach to a business that, um, that could be susceptible to like, make, make, like endangering the women of like losing their jobs or not being able to like feel safe like the protection piece of the women, like how do you work around making sure that they stay safe without their bosses like it being aggravated? Um, so we have nail technicians and peers who are going out to the nail salons, and some, it, I mean, each one is very different. So they um, sometimes there's nail salons where there's no boss or owner there. Um, and sometimes you have to talk to the owner, the receptionist first and say, you know, this is what we're doing and, and this is a project. Um, but one thing that the, the peers have said is that identifying themselves as coming from a community health center really changes the, the focus. So they're there as uh, from a health center. They're not there from like the government or the Ministry of Labor to like investigate. 
Um, and it's, it's not as threatening or viewed as like a potential, um, you know, somebody who's coming to, to slap us on the wrist. Very good question. Yeah, another question? Go ahead. Sorry. I thought it was loud enough. You mentioned sort of, you know, the concerns about labor coming out. But are you hearing those issues from the women? Or do they not understand sort of their rights? And does that come up beyond the health issues? Are you hearing about the worker rights issues? Um. We, we, this is actually one of the issues that we want to explore a bit more because we were focusing mainly on the, on the health issues. Um, but what, what we know, that, like just a couple of things that have come up is that um, women tend to be paid on commission. And so being paid on commission and being paid as a, a self-employed worker brings up certain things around workers' rights that people don't necessarily know, and so, um, so that's one area we want to look at a bit more, more closely. Um, and secondly, in terms, of, uh, in terms of training, a lot of women who are working at nail salons get trained on the job, um, and not only that, they're, kind of, they're paying for their training to the nail salon. So, so there's some, there, there are definitely some questions around employment standard stuff in there. Yeah. Good. Sorry. Yeah. What are the steps that you hope the nail salon workers will be able to enact on a personal basis if not if it's not going to be through um, labor standard changes? I think that's a good question because you never want to leave it like, okay, well you have this giant problem and unless you know someone up there does something, you'll just be stuck with it. So, so we are focusing on some of the things that people can do personally, so steps you can, they can take um, in their own work practices to make themselves safer. And there are, and there are, definitely, there, there are definitely some things that people can do personally. Um, and what, what we have found is that owners don't seem to, they don't care if you do things to protect yourself. They just might not be willing to do them themselves mm -hmm. or teach you. But if you, if you want to like wear your gloves and if you, you know, are careful with your... Um, where you put your garbage and stuff like that, that's fine. So, so there are those things that we're kind of focusing on so that people can take some agency over their own protection. Good. So um, excellent questions, and I think we're ready to go on this end. Thank you so much. I appreciate that.